go. Now, check status. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Task is still running. Okay, well, that's that's fine. Uh, let's get some lunch going. Hmm, I think Supreme. So the stream will be over <laughs> when food arrives. Uh, but I need to get going on that, so. Let's see, that looks good. Jalapenos in half? Yes, all right, are we still running? All right. Oh, Pizza Hut. All right, um, I guess let's also stare at this code a little bit while we're waiting for things to run. I, I guess it took more than three minutes for the silence detection to work, which makes sense. I think there's like, uh, streams are generally like three hours, so that's uh, like, probably nine videos, nine 20 minute videos. They probably take about a minute to process each. Just, I don't actually know if that, I think that <laughs> sounds like a, an accurate number. Uh, let's see, let's get some, something else. Sure, let's try that. All right, I think I hit the minimum. All right, getting that order in. So this code that we're looking at here, it's defining a chart. It is um, calling d3.create. So it's creating an SVG element. And it is adding an attribute of the view box and then it's appending instead of the SVG, a G element with a grab cursor. That's why the cursor is that, like that, telling us that we can grab it and pan, although we have to zoom in first to do that. Um, Order placed. Uh, and then G dot select all rect dot data epochs. Epochs is coming from here, an array with the from and a duration. Okay, interesting. So, like this stuff here, you could just do with. React, right? You just do your normal uh, JSX style component. Where it gets interesting is kind of what uh, is going on here with this dot data and select all and join, uh, which you could also do this with, with React, right? Where basically it's taking the data from epochs and it's creating a rect, I think, for each element and in React, you would just like, you can map over an array and add elements. Part of, so this this here, what I'm talking about is specifically why uh, I haven't really used these three a lot, but uh, if we were to like these, so event labels data, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, time labels, 5 billion, 4 billion. Okay, so we're not using So a feature here that I would care about, we don't actually see in this, which is actually generating the uh, the time scale at the bottom. And then when we zoom in, it like zooming in and showing us a minimal number of points. Um, but that is something you could do. There are functionalities in here for that. 
Not to mention, like, the zoom capability. Like, how are we zooming in this? Turbulent rainbow. So that's where the, like, the coloration of the elements are coming from. Is these three dot interpolate ran rainbow from I, where I is the index. So basically it's it's creating colors for the epochs based on their index, I think is what's going on there. Now, how is the zoom working? So we create a D3 dot zoom with an extent. What is extent? It's an array. Is that defining kind of the upper and lower scales? Yeah, something like that, I guess. We could look at the API docs if we really wanted to know for sure. Scale extent, translate extent, on zoom, then we transform things. Now this, I'm not sure how you, how you would do that in, um, with just like a React component. Like you could listen for like click for drag events and for zooming and then change <laughs> state and then transform things in the SVG. On the other hand, it's going to be challenging. Like, you can use D3 in a React component. What you just need to do is you need to create, like, a uh, an element and then uh, add a ref and then pass that ref into your code where you're doing D3 stuff. And you just basically build that interface, right? Where you're handle handing D3, like, here's where in the DOM you can do whatever. And you just hand that over. And you have like a clean break between your React component and your D3 code. I have thought about this once or twice. Um, but do I want to do that? <laughs> do we do we need Zoom? I think maybe not right now. I think let's try let's try using. Um, do we, let's use SVG because I think that'll keep, uh, keep open some possibilities, but if we use SVG and we just use react to render out, uh, some rectangles, that could be good. Of course we could just use like spans or divs or something, just normal HTML elements to render that out. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do with SVG that may be helpful in the future. And uh, this is definitely like this timeline is kind of a graphical thing. So SVG feel, feels appropriate. Uh, in the meantime, did we, did we actually um, finish? Yes, okay. So if we load results, what we should see here is reasonable values that are, um, I'll use a fancy word, they're monotonically increasing. <laughs> actually, is that true? I guess that would be true because a silence has a duration. So every value increases. It doesn't stay the same, it doesn't go down, right? So we have a silence starting at 900, 935 seconds to 937, a silence from 1576 to 1578. Um, there are a lot of like two second silences. That's kind of interesting. Um, the reason for that is because of the parameters we gave to the silence detection filter, where it's looking for a minimal amount of silence, right? It's saying, don't report silences that are less than two seconds. So that's that's why it's doing that. Um, honestly, like this is not too many data points, but it'll be interesting to actually see this visualized. I think this will be more like, this is basically useless, but if we, if we can visualize it, that'll be good. So um, I think I might want to just save this data though. Uh, if worse comes to worse, I can always delete it out later. So let's save and maybe this will actually work. 
Again, since I haven't gotten this far before, uh, I don't actually know if that part actually works. All right, looks like the request completed. So if we click back here and go to that tab, we should just have data there without having to load. Once the UI becomes responsive again. Now, in terms of timeline stuff, I think I said before that we may want this kind of timeline UI else, elsewhere. We're not gonna try to solve for all those other use cases right now, but having some kind of timeline uh, to be able to explore the transcript might be helpful. It's just kind of like a, uh, you know, a thing that you can skip to a particular point. Of course, you could just scroll like this, but maybe we want something like that for kind of a navigation aid. But yeah, there we go. So um, I think technically what's supposed to happen is that the task URL is supposed to be cleared out when we save. So there shouldn't be a check status button here, but that's kind of a minor bug. All right, just checking on my food order. <laughs> All right, ah, I caught it, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. So UI stuff. All right. Um, so there's a few ways of tackling this, right? If we were really committed to like right up front, creating a generic component, we could do that. I think in this context, it's going to be, um, it's going to make sense to just like focus on, um, this one specific use case and make something and then we can come back now that being said we still may want to create a separate component just in this file just for the sake of like keeping unrelated things separate separated so we could have like i'll just i could call it like a, make a a component called timeline that would take a list of um, segments um, the reason I want to just do it in this file right now is eventually we need to be able to like edit the segments um, and I guess I could just make a generic editable timeline component Yeah, I think, I feel like the UI, like what we need from the timeline visualization is narrow enough and I, I can kind of see in my, I can feel in my head how well-defined it is so that I don't feel like it's necessary to start with like a one-off thing specifically for this input. So let's do this. Um, I don't... I'm just gonna put something in SRC. That feels wrong, but we don't really have a component hierarchy set up for this for this front end. At some point we may want to create like, oh, here's where uh, reusable components are, or go, going as far as what I set up for uh, the Daily Jewel project, where we had like uh, front end component atoms and molecules and organisms, right? Different levels of component but we don't need any of that right now. We're just starting out. Um, so we're gonna make a, um, let's, I'm thinking here, we could, I don't know. I can't. I can't foresee all of the like the details of how the component work is going to go, and specifically how things are going to work with having a editable versus non-editable timeline. And there's definitely going to be places where we don't want to have like the ability to edit things in it. 
should that be one component? So should that be two components? I don't know. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a component called timeline. It, it's definitely worthwhile to kind of think things through, but at some point you just gotta make something, <laughs> see how it goes and adapt from there. Uh, we don't want to be stuck in analysis paralysis, um, as the as it's called. So we're gonna make a const timeline uh, like so, and we can do something like that. But that's not what we're going to do. It's a good try, Copilot. It's a good try. That's, there we go. Uh, and we're gonna export default. Yep but not those bits. Now what we could have done to kind of get started on this is um, something that I have done in the past where instead of doing like actually writing out all the code, we could write a comment. Like this is a uh, component that displays the timeline of uh, segments aka if only I knew where the K was <laughs> periods of time that are defined uh, <laughs> now that's a good guess um, the timeline tome line timeline <laughs> It's a horizontal line with segments displayed as colored blocks. The segments are displayed in chronological order and the timeline is scrollable if there are too many segments to fit in the viewport. Uh, I think that would be cool if we could have that happen. Uh, the timeline is implemented as a React component. The timeline component takes a list of segments as a prop and renders the segment as colored blocks on the timeline. The timeline component also handles scrolling and zooming uh, the elements. of the timeline are uh, SVG elements and the timeline component uses the <laughs> E3 library to handle rendering it does, the rendering it is not. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we can do something like that, right? And then just like have it autocomplete. I kind of like doing it this way. The alternative would be to go into like um, chat here and uh, how do I click? Oh yeah, just new chat. Uh, and you could take something like this description, like write a component that does these things, put it in here and it would generate code for you. And that would be kind of similar to what you would do in like chat GPT. I kind of like doing it this way because then we get a little bit of code at a time and we can intercede if something is going off the rails uh, as it does. Now, maybe we'll end up using use ref. I don't think we have a, a segment. <laughs> Here, hold on, let's, uh, let's say const timeline equals, okay. Let's also, let's make an interface. I think that's what it's trying to drive towards. Uh, start and end are, we probably want to make it so that the value for start and end are like seconds or something for passing data to the, this component. Uh, I don't think we're going to have it take a color and then we're going to say, yeah, there we go. Interface timeline props to so the props for the timeline. It takes segments. There we go. Now, if I delete this, there we go. Now it gives me a line that, okay. Now let's see what this does. <laughs> okay. Why, why does it insist on having a ref? Probably because it's likely that if we want to implement zooming, we'll need to do something to the SVG element. Timeline width, timeline height. But it's not really clear. Okay, so 
the idea and the code that it's trying to have us take <laughs> is that we have a use effect when uh when 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 the svg element changes we set the timeline width okay so this is this allows this this would allow us to read the current uh client width and height of the svg element and put it into these states that actually kind of makes sense and then we have segments and we map over and we create rects uh, and they have fill. This doesn't do everything. Uh, a thing this also doesn't do is that like, what do you start and end represent here? Um, view box. Yeah, I think there's some stuff missing in terms of like the overall scale because I think that the, the segment width needs to be, you're hopping off, yeah. I think my food's almost here too. I think the, the there's some stuff to do with scaling that we need to do with this. Okay, I'm gonna look at the other ideas that it has. So idea two from Copilot, for some reason, okay. Okay, so now it, it has handlers for wheel, for like scroll wheel, uh, Scroll X, set zoom. This is looking interesting. Uh, SVG, ref, on wheel, on scroll, transform. That's interesting. Uh, what's the third one? Okay, so this also has like zoom in. Overflow. Zoom in, zoom out buttons. Timeline. I might, I might take the second one here. Now, is this gonna work? Probably not, probably not. But I think it's a good place to start in terms of having something, <laughs> having something. Um, and then what we'll need to do, I think one last thing, um, is let's go back over to the, the stream silence detection input. How is this gonna work? So the thing that we did to make the whole thing work before uh, is not what we want, right? Because we don't actually want an array input here, but it's, it's fine. One thing we are going to do here is we're going to add our new timeline. Uh, of course, silence detection segments is not right. We can definitely extract this um, from the record. There we go. Take that and then move that down there. There we go. Okay. So that'll at least get us the data. Uh, we do need to import the component. The issue is going to be, of course, that Silence detection segments here does not have the right shape. What we need to do is, uh, I guess the quick and dirty thing is we can just map the data here into the right shape. So if we map, yeah, segment any, uh, we do something like this. That's right. So we have a start and an end, which is what we need, except they need to be numbers. And these are not, we, we happen to know that these are strings. And what we need to do is we need to parse these. Uh, we should have a function for that. Parse ISO duration. There we go. And once I've done it once, Copilot will give me the, the second bit. So that that's probably the nicest thing about Copilot it's like a smarter autocomplete because it can use context from around to suggest, you know, uh, the thing that makes sense there. So I suspect this is not going to work. Hey, Lady Versai, welcome in. How's it going? Uh, we are going to see if this thing that I've just had co-pilot write for me is going to work. 
uh, as soon as I restart the front end. I'm also awaiting uh, a word on my pizza delivery. <laughs> because once that happens, I'm probably gonna get off and meet up with Foxy Blue. Uh, she is hosting a, a, a pizza party in her Discord for the Foxy family, which is uh, the subscribers. Oh, uh, okay, approaching. Huh, maybe the pizza is here. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so we're gonna reload this page and see if it works. Uh, well, your pizza portal. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, maybe pizza here, maybe pizza is here, I don't know. <laughs> hey, save money. What's that emote? Laughs. <laughs> maybe it's here. If it is, it's in the other room. Uh, so there is an SVG element here, and there's stuff inside of it. There are rectangles, uh, but the width and height is zero. Rip. Okay. So I think that's going to be it, though, for the stream today, <laughs> because I'm hungry, and I need to meet up and uh, celebrate Foxy Blue's birthday uh, in her Discord. Um, let me drop some links. So I also have a Discord where I share announcements. There's also a coding channel. There's a gaming channel for talking about gaming stuff. Um, there is uh, also a YouTube channel. So I recently made it so that you have to be a sub to see the VODs here on Twitch, but I have lightly edited VODs from all of my streams posted on YouTube. Uh, I've almost catched up on the backlog and I gotta go do some video editing. But uh, yeah, check that out as well. Um, I hope to do more like edited content in the future as soon as I can get AI to do it for me. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Thanks everyone so much for coming out. Uh, hope you had a good time. Hope the rest of your Sunday is good. Um, I think we're just gonna wrap here because uh, and also think uh, peeve 33 for the follow. Uh, I'm hungry and it's time to cele celebrate Foxy's birthday. All right. Thanks again. Until next time. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>